want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Brandt. All right, folks. Well, the rehabitionists are just losing their minds over the CNN Dr. Sanjay Gupta weed documentary. I already did a rant on prohibitionists furiously spinning Dr. Sanjay Gupta's weed. You know, I tackled the bleedings of social policy PhD Kevin Sabet and Project Sam. You know, they were responding to the neurosurgeon, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And if you've been following my rants for a while, you know that Kevin Sabet is the Joker to my Batman. Ah, if only I had Bruce Wayne's bank account. (laughs) Uh, If so, then Dr. Christian Thurstone is the Riddler. He sort of looks like Frank Gorsham anyway. Dr. Thurstone is one of the Denver area's leading rehab businessmen and an opponent of both Colorado Amendment 64, legal weed, and 20, medical marijuana. Because, you know, the children! Now, normally, I try not to hurl too many stones at people with advanced degrees, you know, from my college dropout house. Uh, I respect the talent, dedication, perseverance, and debt that it takes to get a PhD or an MD. But lately, I've noticed that some of the people like Dr. Sabet and Dr. Thurstone don't extend that same respect to their colleagues, some of whom have far more relevant experience and education in the fields of science and medicine. Sabet. <clears throat> the latest missive from Dr. Christian Thurstone is entitled, Riggs, What Was CNN Smoking? Now, it loses points not only for hack use of a pop pun headline, but also for daring to impugn the credentials of the doctors, medical science doctors, in the Dr. Sanjay Gupta special, as he introduces a guest piece from his colleague, Dr. Paula Riggs. This is Thurstone writing, quote, Dr. Paula Riggs, a professor of psychiatry at the University of Colorado, is a true expert, not a self-proclaimed expert, in the research and treatment of marijuana addiction. She has extensive experience in clinical practice and research, and also peer-reviewed publications in the field. Unlike some of the sources Dr. Gupta and the CNN production team chose to feature at great length. Okay. Well, I've had the privilege of interviewing a couple of those doctors from the CNN Gupta special. That would be Dr. Carl Hart and Dr. Julie Holland on my radio shows in the past. And in preparing for these interviews, I have to research the resume of the people I'm interviewing. Now, I know... They are both as loath to wave their CV around as any respectable professional would. So let me do it for them. Dr. Carl Hart is an associate professor of psychology in both the departments of psychiatry and psychology at Columbia University and director of the Residential Studies and Methamphetamine Research Laboratories at the New York State Psychiatric Institute. A major focus of Dr. Hart's research is to understand complex interactions between drugs of abuse and the neurobiology and environmental factors that mediate human behavior and physiology. He is the author or co-author of dozens of peer-reviewed scientific articles in the area of neuropsychopharmacology, co-author of the textbook Drug, Society, and Human Behavior, and a member of the National Institute of Health Review Group. Dr. Hart was recently elected to fellow status by the American Psychological Association, Division 28, for his outstanding contribution to the field of psychology, specifically psychopharmacology and substance abuse. In addition to his substantial research responsibilities, Dr. Hart teaches undergraduate and graduate courses and was recently awarded Columbia University's Highest Teaching Award. (laughs) Dr. Julie Holland is a board-certified psychiatrist in New York City, 
As an undergraduate at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Holland majored in Biological Basis of Behavior, a series of courses combining the study of psychology and the neural sciences with a concentration in psychopharmacology, or drugs and the brain. In 1992, Dr. Holland received her medical degree from Temple University School of Medicine, where she performed research on auditory hallucinations, extensively interviewing nearly 100 psychotic patients. In 1996, she completed a psychiatric residency at Mount Sinai Medical Center, where she was the creator of a research project treating schizophrenics with a new medication, obtaining an IND from the Food and Drug Administration. In 1994, she received the Outstanding Resident Award from the National Institute of Mental Health, from 1996 to 2005, Dr. Holland ran the psychiatric emergency room of Bellevue Hospital on Saturday and Sunday nights. <laughs> wow. A liaison to the hospital's medical emergency room and toxicology department, she is considered an expert on street drugs and intoxication states and lectures widely on this topic. Those are a couple of the doctors that uh, rehab owner Dr. Christian Thurstone claims are self-proclaimed experts, not true experts. Now, I can't speak directly to the credentials of Dr. Alan Shackelford or any of the other doctors in America and Israel who were featured on the documentary, but I'm assured they are all well qualified to speak on the issue of marijuana. So, I was just curious what Dr. Thurstone's true expert Dr. Paula Riggs had to say about the CNN Sanjay Gupta special. Here are some of her complaints. Number one, the documentary conveyed that habitual marijuana smokers were less impaired drivers compared to occasional smokers based on CNN's anecdotal demonstration that included two individuals. Oh, well, yeah, okay, let's not, let's not uh, say that Pot smoking drivers who have experience are better drivers than pot smoking drivers who have little experience, unless we have some studies to back that up, right? You know, like D'Souza et al. 2008, quote, frequent users of cannabis are either inherently blunted in their response to and or develop tolerance to the psychomimetic perceptual, perceptual altering, amnestic, endocrine, and other effects of cannabinoids, end quote. Or, Remakers et al. 2009, quote, THC did not affect the performance of heavy cannabis users, except in the stop signal task. Cannabis use history strongly determines the behavioral response to single doses of THC, end quote. Or, Dr. Carl Hart et al. 2010, quote, Frequent marijuana users may show fewer behavioral signs of disruption during intoxication than infrequent users, end quote. Or Raymakers again, et al. 2010, quote, heavy cannabis users develop tolerance to the impairing effects of THC on neurocognitive task performance, end quote. Sure, CNN only showed two examples. It's not like they had an entire week to show all of them. But uh, the science backs them up on this. Experienced cannabis consumers develop tolerance to the impairing effects of THC. She continues. The documentary clearly promoted the use of smoked medical marijuana and did not mention alternatives such as synthetic THC. <sighs> yeah, because Marinol pills are not an alternative for that 19 year old guy who had to who'd have to swallow them while he's having diaphragmatic seizures and have to wait 45 minutes the digestion time it takes for them to take effect. And they don't work. Besides, the show is called Weed, not Pills. Marinol's already legal. It doesn't need a documentary. Paula Riggs continues. The documentary did indicate that marijuana is addictive, stating that 9% or 1 in 11 of individuals who smoke marijuana progress to addiction or dependence. However, CNN did not distinguish between adults and adolescents who have been shown to have greater vulnerability to cannabis addiction. Oh, my. Well, look, folks, first, that 9% statistic from National Institutes of Drug Abuse, 
actually does include all pot smokers from age 12 to death. And the stupid one in six adolescents get addicted statistics? Huh. That comes from rehabitionists adding together percentages from separate youth groups. Don't have time to explain the math as to why you can't add percentages of groups, but just su suffice to say uh, it's uh, junk science, junk statistics. And besides, these addiction statistics are so easy to debunk if you just think about it. In 2011, the National Survey on Drug Use and Health said there were 108 million people who admit that they have tried marijuana. 61.7 million of them tried it before age 18. So one-sixth of them, or about 10.2 million, should be marijuana addicts. Or just take NIDA's original 1 out of 11 stat against the 108 million, and you get 9.7 million marijuana addicts. Okay, so... If there's supposed to be somewhere between 9.7 and 10.2 million marijuana addicts, how come that same National Survey on Drug Use and Health tells us that there are only 3.4 million aged 12 and older who admit to smoking pot every day of the month? <laughs> well, look, if you want to get that figure of regular marijuana smokers up to 10 million of them, you have to include everyone who smokes pot eight days a month or more. Eight days a month. That's twice a week. Also, consider that there are 30 million people who smoke pot annually. So Dr. Riggs is asserting that one out of three pot smokers is an addict? Well, yeah, I suppose if you count every person who smokes pot on the weekends as an addict... But crap, by that standard, we got to start worrying about all the alcoholics who are drinking beer on the weekends. She continues, four, the documentary created confusion about the potential benefits of cannabidiol, also called CBD, versus the high THC content of most medical and recreational marijuana products. I was most concerned by the suggestion that cannabis may be neuroprotective, for example, build her brain. Oh, you mean that high THC that you mentioned was medically beneficial in the Marinol pills that you talked about in complaint number two? Or the high THC content found in the herb that was being smoked by the 19-year-old with the diaphragmatic spasms? And as for build her brain, how about this study from Wolf et al. 2010 that concluded CB1 affected stages of adult neurogenesis that involve intermediate, highly proliferative progenitor cells and the survival and maturation of new neurons. The pro-neurogenic effects of CBD might explain some of the positive therapeutic features of CBD-based compounds, end quote. She continues, Dr. Riggs. Although there are certainly individuals with medical conditions whose use of marijuana supports more research, the CNN documentary was scientifically imbalanced and irresponsible in suggesting positive health and psychological benefits for which there is little to no evidence. <laughs> yeah, other than what you saw with your own lion eyes. More research, she says, even though I was just able to find 23,997 studies on cannabinoids in the government's own PubMed database, dating as far back as 1938. Well, maybe that 24,000th study will finally convince her there's enough research. And her final complaint the many positive claims of health benefits associated with medical marijuana were not balanced by the scientifically known health risks associated with marijuana use. Ah, yeah, yeah, she goes there. She even includes that widely debunked eight-point reduction in IQ talking point. And she even goes so far as to compare it to, quote, a public health crisis comparable to the impact of environmental lead poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Marijuana use is as bad as lead poisoning. Uh, according to a 2002 study by Landrigan et al., lead poisoning cost U.S. health care $43.4 billion every year. And the World Health Organization notes that lead poisoning causes one out of 500 deaths every year. 
She then crusades for the children, you know, the the juvenile delinquents that are sure to be born to pot smoke pot smoking moms, the toddlers who might accidentally eat a pot brownie, the teenagers on not your fathers would stock weed who are damaging their brains, and the few chronic tokers who smoke themselves into a vomiting fit. Well, that clinches it. We better keep it illegal for adults whose brains have already developed, who are less likely to get addicted and are able to pickle their livers with alcohol and blacken their lungs with tobacco because, you know, marijuana is bad for children. <laughs> well, look, while I enjoy waiting in the minutia of all of these drug warriors, I've got a much simpler way for you to debunk them anytime. Whatever talking point comes out of their mouth, you just respond with, Oh, so that's why we need to continue wasting law enforcement resources on imprisoning cannabis farmers and marijuana dealers. Oh, that's why adults who smoke pot must be forced into rehab with piss tests at the threat of jail. God, from the way they complain, you'd think they were proposing blunt wraps on a dime bag in the school lunch. That's all the time we got, folks. I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. Bobby Platshorn, one hour tomorrow special and Seattle Hemp Fest on Friday. We'll see you there. Until next time, take care of each other. Talkers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You're growing, you're giant, you're rolling, you're smoking. You take a seat, you're planning, you're growing.